Welcome to Deal Closers with Annette Talee, where we focus on the deals. Our guests are real estate closers who will share in detail the whole process from finding a deal to closing it, as well as strategies and tips to help you do the same. Here is your host, Annette Talee. Welcome to another episode of Deal Closers. I am your host, Annette Talee. I have today with me Paul Hasselbrook, and I am very excited to have him because he's a personal friend and we go to the same meetup here in Fort Lauderdale. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. So let me tell you a little bit about him. He's very impressive. Uh, Paul is the founder and principal of 64 Assets Management LLC. Throughout his 16-year finance career, he has continually sought to add value to investors by focusing on managing costs and focusing on operational efficiency. Over the past 10 years, Paul has participated in raising over $29 million for various real estate and private equity investment opportunities. He's most recently the CEO of Valiant Wealth LLC, an emerging family office practice with locations in Des Moines, Jupiter, and Nashville. During his tenure, that firm grew the A. UM from 68 million to 155 over a four year period. Mm -hmm. That is very impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Paul's personal mission statement is to be a catalyst for growth. A natural networker and people connector, Paul loves helping investors identify investments that help them achieve their goals. Six for Assets Management has grown quickly in 2019, securing two properties under contract and closing in a franchise hotel. The company seeks to provide its tenants with safe and good place to live, an affordable price, while providing investors with good investment returns. That is impressive. Welcome. <laughs> Thank I'm so happy you. To have you. Yeah. So, what uh, is the deal we're going to talk about today? Um, so we could talk about that uh, hospitality deal that closed um, in the fourth quarter of 2019. All right. But before we start with that, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into, you know, from finance uh, background, how yes. did you get into real estate? Well, thanks for reading my bio. Um, in there, it talks about this family office practice that I was a part owner of. And I did that for about 15 years. And over the last um, probably 10 years of my ownership of that business, I started to do more private equity investing just because of uh, how it was introduced to my clients and they were asking me for help. And um, so uh, I had an opportunity to exit that business. I decided I'd had enough of the cold of the Midwest. And so I relocated to South Florida, which is how we met. Um, and my new firm is 64 Asset Management. It launched in July of 2019. So it's just uh, not even a year old yet. And um, I'm focused on um, my business model is real estate syndication. So I'm focused on acquiring good cash flowing assets for, um, with, for my investors. Do you do any assets or are you focusing on, uh, on hospitality in syndication? My focus is really on uh, mixed use. Um, I've done a lot of new construction mixed use, which is the two projects I'm working on right now. Um, but multifamily or mixed use is my primary focus. The hospitality opportunity presented itself and I really liked um, the numbers on it and I was very familiar with the asset, so I decided to, um, to acquire it. Awesome. The Deal. All right, so let's get into the deal. Uh, what's the deal? Where is it located? Uh, tell me all about it. Yeah, so I, I um, um, have lived uh, my permanent home in Florida for a year now and uh, have been really been looking for properties down here and was struggling to find multifamily. Um, and I knew of this hotel in Iowa that the owners, the sellers, had owned for 13 years. So it was an off-market deal. It's a 77 um, key hotel with an indoor pool. Um, and it, um, you know, it, it, it just has a great operational history. It needed a little bit of improvements, but not a lot. They really, the sellers had taken good care of it. So. Awesome. So how did you <clears throat> find the deal? Like, was it through a broker? 
Yeah, no, it wasn't. There were no brokers involved in the transaction. I actually had, um, like I said, I, I knew of the, um, I knew, I knew of this hotel and I knew the sellers and I had actually reached out to one of the members of the selling group for help with a, um, hotel I had found in South Florida and said, you know, Hey, would you help me with the due diligence? Um, this looks very similar to multifamily, but obviously a much, uh, higher turnover rate. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. but you know, tell me what I'm missing, help me out. And so through that process, um, we didn't, uh, um, make an offer on the Florida hotel, but we started looking around at some other stuff and he said, you know, he would be open to selling this one in Iowa that I was asking all these questions about. And so that, that's kind of how the deal came together. So it was through a relationship. Yeah, it was. It was through networking and asking asking him for help um, led to the conversation of you know what when when are they going to sell that hotel and and um, you know what their plans were for it. So it's so very important, you know, to, to yeah. have net, and that's why I started going to meetups and now I host a meetup because you know I I was doing it for five years by myself, very isolated, and once I started going to meetups you know, everything changed because you, you start getting all this information from different points of views and different type of projects and then your mindset changes. Yeah. So, and you create these relationships that are, you know, so valuable. Yeah. Awesome. I think, every, you know, you and I have had that conversation before about networking and how important it is. Um, networking with brokers, attorneys, property managers, um, insurance adjusters, people who know where properties are at everybody sells for different reasons and it's, you know, uh, you know, just letting people know what you do is so important to, to be able to uncover opportunities. Absolutely. Like a friend of mine that is, a, um, he's an appraiser. He is the one that gave me the name of, of the bank for my, my lender on my first multifamily, you know, yeah. and once you are recommended by somebody, they take you so much more seriously than if you just, you know, go out of the blue and ask them for for something so definitely relationships are so important right. right so what was the listing price and how much did you get it for how did you negotiate that um yeah there there wasn't a listing price um we talked um sort of talked cap rates then i asked for the financials and we ended up acquiring it for 5.4 million and, and this was a value add, you said, right? You had to do some improvement. Um, it really, I wouldn't really consider it a value add. It needed some work, but it was in very nice shape. So it's more of a, um, you know, a cash flow opportunity. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. But it was immediate, right? You didn't have to wait so much to... Right. Well, anytime um, with hotels, with franchised hotels, the, um, the franchise always has what they call the PIP. Um, the uh, property improvement plan they they go through and audit the hotel and anytime there's a change in ownership that's the hotel franchises opportunity to make sure that the property is up to brand standards um, so some of the value add or you know value add or, or property improvement that was required um, we were able to work with the franchise to get uh, 12 to 24 months to implement some of it. Mm -hmm. So um, we, I did raise extra equity up front in addition to the down payment to cover those types of improvements. Um, so some of the, some of it was addressed immediately and some of it will be addressed in the coming um, year or two. So, wow. Yeah. That's so true. Uh, you know, as an architect, also working in uh, hotels designing, we have to look through that uh, book of requirements yeah. of what the brand wants. You know, each yeah. brand has their own requirements and they have specific stuff, how they want it, where they want it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. But um, we closed on the property um, at the uh, early November and um, we're already getting ready to do a distribution. So it, it really has been turnkey in that aspect where most of the improvements that needed to be done did not uh, interrupt business operations. So the, the hotel continues to operate and generate cash flow to the and owners. Awesome. And, and we've been talking about syndication and some people may not know what it means. So would you explain to people what it means? Yeah. Um, a syndication is uh, a syndicate is a group of people put, putting their money together to acquire a property. Um, 
in most cases, the members of the syndicate are uh, passive investors. So they're not actually operating um, the property. They're putting the money up to acquire it and then receiving back um, pass through depreciation and income. And that those are the distributions you were talking about. So you are already so fast ready to, to give them some money uh, for their investment, correct? Right. Yep. And what's yeah. the rate that you um, were um, offering your investors? Um, so the hotel, so the um, the hotel that we're talking about was a 506B offering. So it was uh, open to qualified investors, and um, I raised it from my network, um, and I raised it in a way that they it's just a straight split of the profits amongst the investors pro rata. So. Um, what I see a lot now from syndicators is a preferred rate of return mm -hmm. where investors are used to getting a promise of seven or eight percent per year Correct. Um, up front. Uh, I, I think that's pretty typical in what I'm seeing on a couple other deals I'm working on right now. But on this one in particular, um, it, there, there wasn't a preferred rate. <laughs> so it was kind of like a split, like 20, 80, 30, 50, yeah. something like that. Whatever you yep. made, then you divided it between the, the yep. operators and the passive investors. Correct, yep. Oh, excellent, even more simpler, right? Yeah, and that was my goal, honestly, was to try and keep it simple, um, so. That's awesome, so, you know, so we already kind of talked about, the next question was, you know, how did you negotiate it? But you already told us it was through this relation. So did you, but did you have, once you got the financials, did you just make an offer and they took it, or was there any negotiation? There, there was some back and forth and um, kind of a question. They, the, the sellers, there were a few items that the um, sellers uh, were doing from an accounting standpoint that were different than how um, I intended to do it. And so, you know, we, we, um, we negotiated in good faith based on conversations. Um, I wrote the LOI, um, I had about a 30 day due diligence period. So I wrote the LOI and then during that 30 day due diligence period that preceded signing the purchase agreement, I got copies of bank statements and um, tax filings and went through all the financials and it actually turned out that it wasn't, um, it wasn't as uh, profitable as what we thought it might've been, you know, once I started to dig into the numbers. So then I did have to go back and um, renegotiate the price uh, based on, the actual uh, numbers that the hotel had done. So there was a little bit of that back and forth, but um, we still got a really good return for the investors. And I think the sellers were pretty happy with how it came out too, so. That's awesome. And then, so how did you fund it? I know you had investors that put some money up for uh, the down payment and for the renovations, but how did you find the whole project? How did I uh, fund it? Fund it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, the debt side, there was a local lender that had held a note on the hotel since it was built 13 years ago. So I started with them. Um, and in talking with them, I kind of reached a sticking point. So I reached out to a couple other people in my network that were also interested in investing in it. And one of them had a really good relationship with another local bank that was very excited to take the business away from the first lender um, so that was kind of a process to understand hospitality um, you're not able to amortize, amortize over as long a time period as you can on multifamily um, the rates are a little bit different and so is the um, the equity requirements so I, I there's 25 percent equity that had to go into this deal to meet the bank's underwriting standards so uh, a local bank did the debt side and then I raised the equity side from the investment syndicate Oh, wow. So you need a 25% for um, hotels. Yep. So it's a little bit higher. Sometimes for multifamily, you can do 20%. Yeah, sometimes 20 and most of the time 30-year amortization. Um, on the hotels, uh, there's different ways of finance them. I'm not the financing expert, but there's some SBA products that you can do that are 20-year notes. Um, and some banks will do 25 years on hospitality, but it's a shorter, um, you know, shorter time period for the for the loan than multifamily okay all right so and 
what's your exit strategy? What what are you doing with this uh, hotel? Are you keeping it? Are you selling it? Are you refinancing? Yeah, so I, I'm a buy and hold investor. I'm pretty conservative, and I would love to just hang on to this thing forever. But realistically, um, I'm doing a cost seg um, on it to uh, maximize depreciation, and we will probably have written and depreciated out most of the building over the first five years. So um, my investors always want to know two things. What kind of return are they getting, which you already asked me about, and two, when do I get my money back? Correct. Um, so on this one, um, what I told them was the, we'll try and market it for sale sometime in year, years five to seven. So um, in year five, uh, we'll start to look at where the market is at and figure out if it's a good time to sell, if it's not ideal. I told them I'd like to be able to hang on to it for a year or two uh, longer to, ch to be opt opportunistic about getting the best um, return that we can out of it. But So five years, realistically, is the whole period. So in five years, you're going to look at the deal again, and then you're going to decide to hold it a little yeah. bit longer on, or to sell. Yeah, I'm just envisioning a scenario where, you know, if, if, we're, if five years from now we're in the middle of another 2008, and you know that's just not the right time. I didn't want to be uh, forced by the investors into having to sell it. Correct. Um, and so there's a window there where I said five to seven years, um, which would give me a little bit of time to um, maybe wait for more favorable economics um, to to um, dispose of it. Uh, amazing. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, yeah. That's a good idea. You know, I haven't thought uh, before of like starting with the the people that, own, that have the loan with the bank that it has the current loan and then just compare it to the other ones because I would assume that they would want to keep that if it's a cash flowing asset they want to keep that loan you know and just work with a new owner right and I had just you know I had just sold the financial planning business I was just launched this business and my initial mindset was this lender already knows how well this hotel performs they have all the financials for it already right mm -hmm. so uh uh, it was a good place to start, um, even though it didn't. We didn't end up there in the long run. Okay, but that's what sometimes you have to do. You have to shop. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, when when I was uh, buying my my first commercial one, I started with a uh, with a, a a broker, and oh, it was a banker actually. And he, you know, he gave me a really good rate on a on, for a duplex. A refinance so you know I and he did commercial so I started with him and I felt bad because we worked for a little bit together but I you know I was able to get such a better rate with a different bank that I had to go with that bank because at the end of the day you have to go with it, um, the best uh, product for your for your investment right. uh, but yeah you have to shop it because probably before I would have just gone with that one and not look for a different option mm-hmm Expert tips. All right. So now I'm going to ask you to give me three tips. And we were talking about it and you wanted to give me three tips uh, to be successful in real estate investing. So please go ahead. Yeah. Well, um, I always joke that, you know, there's a hundred different ways to make money in real estate, right? Uh, everything from originating loans to being a, a broker. So I think mindset is really important to decide where your niche is, where, and that can be maybe where your experience is or, or what you're passionate about, but having, having the right mindset and knowing um, what you're going after is, I think, was the first of my three, three tips I came up with. Um, the second one was always ask questions. Um, I think if you're going to be successful in the syndication business, you have to, I, I say, I describe my syndication business model as trying to find really good investments and match them up with the investors that are looking for that kind of return. So um, to me, that means letting everyone that I talk to know what I do. And that again is property managers, attorneys, estate planning attorneys, real estate attorneys, brokers, people I meet so that they know what kind of properties I buy, but then also what kind of properties do they invest in? What are they looking for? Are they more income focused? Would they be interested in participating in a development deal? So um, always asking lots of open-ended questions and um, being a good listener, I think is critical. 
And then um, my third one was don't be afraid to reach out for help, which you and I have talked a lot about networking. Um, and I've been to your meetup group a lot. And I have found that at least in this segment of the real estate world, that there are a lot of people looking to help. Um, there's a lot of collaboration on every project. So um, it, it also helps to tell everyone, you know, what you're working on right now. Um, and this hotel deal came about because I reached out to someone who I knew had a lot of experience in hospitality. And I said, hey, um, could you help me? Like, could, would you spend some time with me? Would you look at this one and tell me if it makes sense? Um, and I've learned so much through, the, through this whole um, process that I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't picked up the phone and started with asking for help. That is so true. I mean, I, I feel the same way. Networking is uh, so important. And I, mm -hmm. I've only learned this in the past year, and it has changed my investing yeah. for the good. So, well, I love the Jim Rohn quote, you know, you're the five people you spend the most time with. So I think these meetups are critical to me um, for, you know, people like you and I to meet, share ideas, collaborate, and, um, and that's how you learn and how you build potential teams for your future success in real estate. Absolutely. And, you know, everybody that I've met on the, uh, on the meetup, like we are starting to become friends because we, we see each other, you know, once a month. And some of us go to different meetups where we see each other more than once a month. So, you know, right. we, are this, we have formed this group of friends. So I definitely recommend everybody to, to join a meetup, uh, listen to podcasts, you know, get educated because that's going to make a big difference. But, you know, networking by far is one of the best ways to, mm -hmm. to connect with others and learn. All right. So tell us how can people find you, contact you, website, email, whatever you want to share with yeah, you. Yeah, so uh, 64assetmanagement.com. That's um, uh, spelled out S-I-X-F-O-U-R. That's my, uh, my old football number was the inspiration. Um, you can also add me on Facebook, Paul Hassebrook, or on Instagram. My handle is BR03K, Brooke. So. Awesome. All right. So thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, this was wonderful. Thank you for sharing your deal with everybody and uh, so people can learn. And I look forward to seeing you in our next meetup. Yes, for sure. Thank you so much. This was Deal Closers with Annette Tali, brought to you by Tali Investments. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. Our goal is to provide amazing value on your real estate journey. Connect online at www.taleeinvestments.com, where you can find this episode and more. Did you like this episode? Subscribe, like, and share.